Savage Nation. We uh, have an important guest right now. We've been talking about the Black Panther case, and we have right now J. Christian Adams, the former U.S. Department of Justice official and whistleblower, who has accused the Department of Racial Bias in its handling of a voter intimidation case against members of the new Black Panther Party. Now, remember who this gentleman is. He was uh, supervised by the Civil Rights Division attorney, Christopher Coates, who overruled him. Joining us right now is J. Christian Adams. Mr. Adams, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, nice to be here. Well, I've seen you, you know, cover this case over the last few weeks on, on television. I, I sort of think I understand the case, so let's cut to the, to the chase of the case. These Panthers allegedly were video, I mean, I saw the videotape, dressed in military-style uniforms and allegedly hurled racial slurs while one brandished a nightstick. That's all true, correct? Of course it is. Anybody with eyes can see. Okay. Is that a crime? Well, it, it probably could be charged as a crime, but again, Chris Coates and I and the rest of the team, we were in the civil side. So w what's the case then? In other words, they can be racially hateful. They can, uh, did they commit a crime of any kind here? Well, you know, what they did do is they, they blocked access to the polls. They uh, hurled racial slurs at people. They brandished a weapon. Uh, they said, you're about to be ruled by the black man cracker uh, at individuals there. And, uh, you know, these are things we just don't tolerate in this country. All right. But is it a crime for them to be racists? Is, is it a crime for them to say things but not actually intimidate people? Or are you suggesting that their, their statements and their clubs did act to intimidate potential voters? Is that it? No, there's no question about it. Their statements, their, their weapons, their uniforms, their menacing conduct, all of those go together to create a violation of federal law. All right. Well, it's important for the people to understand this because they could say, well, they may be hateful, but did they really commit a crime? Because the Justice Department spokesman said that they investigated it and the law did not support pursuing claims against the two other defendants uh, and denied Adams' allegations. You, of course, believe that they're covering this because of racial reasons, right? Well, there's no doubt about that because of the open and pervasive hostility inside the Civil Rights Division to equally enforcing the law. If they were to allow Chris Coates to testify, I guarantee that he would say the exact same thing. He's lived it. He understands it. And so the members of the team were fighting an uphill battle with a, uh, with a group of people who don't really care about equal enforcement of the law. Chris Coates was in charge of the voting division. He stepped down because he was so disgusted by the by the current uh, uh, tenor there at, at, at the Justice Department on the holder. Yeah, Coates was the section chief and really in charge of this case, and they shipped him off to South Carolina. They stripped him of his job and, and sent him off to South Carolina. See, I tried to have the, the audience understand this because it hasn't yet hit the midstream media who's covering this up, but I asked what would happen if a conservative president had won and American Nazis had appeared with the uniforms and clubs and screamed racial slurs at black people and uh, threatened them at the polling place. And then it turns out that the president or attorney general under the conservative intervenes and the case is thrown out. I mean, there'd be no end to the outcry in the media. I mean, that's really what's going on here, right? And it would be justified because, you know, too many people died in this country to make the ballot box uh, something that is sanctified and free. And so it would be rightful outrage. Yes, it would be. Of course, the ballot box has also been assaulted by illegal aliens voting, but that's a separate a separate issue today. So what would you like seen done? I imagine you want the case reopened. I understand that the Civil Rights Division, uh, whatever that may be, is looking at it again, Mr. Adams. Yeah, the commission has outstanding subpoenas to Christopher Coates that they're ordering Coates not to comply with. They should order, let him comply and tell the truth about this case. The other thing they should do is refile the case. If they did, they would win it, and we would all be better off. So if you're, in your mind, if justice were to prevail, the case would be reopened? The Black Panthers, how many are there involved? Two or three? Uh, four, all told. They would be found guilty of what? Voter intimidation, violating the uh, Voting Rights Act? That's correct. That's correct. What's, what, is the, what is the penalty for that? <laughs> well, since this is a civil case... It's an injunction not to do it again. It says that if you do anything like this again, the marshals will come and take you to federal jail. 
Well, I understand, and I'm not trying to play devil's advocate because I don't believe in that, that uh, the the uh, Obama administration has gotten one of them to uh, agree not to bring a club uh, to a polling place until 2012. <laughs> Is that true? Well, and only in the, and only in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, ah, not, not... so they're free to bring a club anywhere else in the country, I see. Oh, yeah. Now, uh... Who is actually looking into this again? Okay. The U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, which was founded during the Eisenhower administration, is a bipartisan commission that investigates deprivations, you know, people's civil rights being violated. They've opened up an investigation into the dismissal, and that's uh, where I testified earlier this week, was before the Civil Rights Commission. I was under subpoena, and the Justice Department told me not to comply, so I had to give up my job in order to comply with the law. You're kidding me. They told you not to testify before the Civil Rights Commission? In writing. They've also said the same thing to Christopher Coates. Well, wait a minute. That, to me, seems like a separate case unto itself. Well, It sounds I, to me as though your civil rights have been violated. Yeah, I mean, they just said we aren't allowed to testify. How is that possible that an official of the government is not allowed to testify to, before a Civil Rights Commission? I've never heard of any such thing. This is without precedent. So what what do you happening? think is the animus? What is the animus behind the Justice Department? You, you, you imply that there are many cases against blacks that are being suppressed by this administration for racial reasons. Is that what you're, you're al alleging? I'm not saying there's many cases. What I am saying is when there is a case, of which there's only been two in the last decade, uh, it is meant with institutional hostility efforts to not bring the case, efforts to not fully investigate the case, efforts to have the case dismissed, both by people inside the Justice Department as well as the so-called civil rights groups. They're very hostile to these cases. Yeah, civil rights is a one-way uh, street for most of them. Now, how can people listening to the Savage Nation, and this is a very activist audience, and they donate money to causes they believe in, do you have a need for a fund or any kind of money here? I mean, who, who, who's helping you with this? I'm flying solo, my friend. Uh, the, you know, lives uh, honor uh, sacred fortunes. It's, uh, it's, it's, you just got to tell the truth and hope that America is a good nation, which I think you actually, is. You actually quit a federal job, a civil rights, uh, excuse me, a, a civil service job in the name of the truth? That's what you had to do? At the top of the federal pay scale, my friend, top of the line, GS-15... Uh, nine pay. Yep. That's astounding. You're actually one of the last people I've heard of who would ever do that. So, again, I will say, how can my audience help you? Do you have any kind of defense fund or for this particular case where they can contribute ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred dollars? Well, not not now. I haven't given much thought to that. They can go to my website and read all my postings at electionlawcenter.com. Uh, but you know, I'm really not. I don't have a handout because this is America, and I'll figure out something to do. Well, okay, let's put it to you this way. When you do that, I know that many radio shows will have you on and help you reach the American people who always want fairness and justice. I appreciate it. Well, and let me ask you, Mr. Adams, when you retired, or, or rather, rather quit, excuse me, did you, did you, uh, you didn't abrogate your pension, did you, I hope? No, I don't think so, but who knows what they'll try to do, but I don't think they really could do that. No, they can do anything they want. They're the government. You know better than I do what, what a government's capable of when it gets vicious. Yeah. Well, we wish you the best. We hope that the truth shall be uh, heard. And again, if, we need, if you need the help of the American people, believe me, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people out there who will contribute to a defense fund for you. Well, I will keep you uh, updated about the progress of the case, and who knows what great things might happen. All right. Well, you are certainly an American uh, to be admired. That's all I can say. And remember the name, folks. You're listening to a man who has a name, who's given up his career to pursue justice in the racial bias case in the Black Panther situation, and his name is J. Christian Adams. You just heard him live on The Savage Nation. The phone number is 1-800-449-8255. After reviewing the evidence, the department under Obama and Holder concluded that there was insufficient evidence to establish that the party or Malik Zulu Shabazz violated Section 11B 
uh, Assistant Attorney Perez Perez uh, uh, said in his testimony.